Hello, my name is Dr. Matt Harris, and this video is a continuation in my series of the Tenets of Educational Technology Leadership. In this particular video, we're going to talk about educational technology specifically. Now, in a previous video, I talked about information technology, the, the nuts and bolts, hardware and software, networking elements of a school that, a, that an ed tech leader needs to know and understand. Well, there's, a, there's a, a parallel side to that. So not just the operational elements of the technology in the school, but a, a successful educational technology leader has to also understand the academic or the pedagogic elements of technology and the usage of technology for learning. Now, educational technology is a, is a term that, or phrase that we throw around quite a bit. And so before I get too in-depth in this, I want to I give you my definition of educational technology so you understand kind of where I'm coming from and the basis of, of this tenet of educational technology leadership. So in my definition, educational technology is the effective use of digital resources for learning. And there's three elements of there that I want to pop out effective digital resources and learning. So educational technology is the effective use of digital resources for learning. And as an educational technology leader, you have to leverage those digital resources for effective learning, okay? So what do I mean by that? Well, what I'm gonna do now is kind of just break down each of those three main terms of using technology in the classroom, outside of the classroom, using a computer, using online resources, whatever they are, to enhance teaching and learning. Okay, so let's, let's jump into the word effective. What do I mean by effective? An ed tech leader has to understand how to have the discussion, have the analysis of applying the right tool to the right task. What is the right online resource that I use, or what is the right particular piece of computing that I use to, to teach this particular subject? An ed tech leader has to know when learning is occurring. They have to develop learner agency. So that means that the students have to have ownership of their own learning. They have to have a balance between the processes and the outcomes. So ed educational technology is very much steeped in finding the right tools to help a teacher teach a particular content area or to build the set of skills or agency amongst a student. But there's also an element of outcomes that are there. And so a, a strong educational technologist, especially in a leadership position, understands how to balance the process of developing the, that learning and what we hope to get out from the students. A strong educational technologist will build capacity build passion and build interest. So the activities that you're doing, the, the discussions you're having, the planning that you're making, the outcomes that you're focusing on are building capacity, passion, and interest. And those are things that really should be written on your wall or be the basis of your, your discussions as you're figuring out with whomever, what is the right tool for the right activity? What sort of learning are we looking to occur? And why is that learning better than non-resource learning? Okay. So that's kind of the idea of the effectiveness is, is knowing when learning is happening, building agency, building passion, balancing processes. That's something that a pedagogist, a pedagogue, I guess, needs to do within this frame of being an educational technology leader. And as an ed tech leader, you, you are that. You are a pedagogue. You are understanding the process of learning and how technology can be used to improve, deepen, connect that sort of learning. You then have to have an understanding of those tools. And I, and I say this um, as a separation from the pedagogy piece. You, you, as an educational technologist, you don't need to be an expert on what, what online resource there is or the particular um, subscriptions that your school has or a particular computing resource. You have to understand them, and you have to understand them at, at a level of depth. Um, but that's not the only piece of your job. And this is something that you have to relay to the other coaches or the other ed tech um, members of your staff is that you are not just an expert on, on Edmodo or Moodle or BrainPop or something like that. You need to understand them, but you have to understand them in context. However, that said, you do have to have an understanding of the digital resources so that you can be effective towards your learning. So I, I would say that a strong educational technology leader understands and is able to articulate the digital resource tools that are available and how to use them for learning. So you need to be able to, 
If somebody says, why would I use tool X? You have to be able to understand how tool X works and why you would use it for a particular, um, a particular exercise, a particular class, a particular activity, and what the learning ramifications are for that. Um, you need to understand how to access, explain, and evaluate the resources that you have, especially when it comes to information available for students and for teachers and parents. You have to have an understanding or you have to have a, a way of articulating um, how you access, how you explain the usage of a tool, um, and how you evaluate whether it's good or not. Because a, um, a teacher or a student may come in and say, well, I want to use this. Very well could be better than, than the tool I've been offering, but what are our evaluation criteria? What are we trying to do from a pedagogic standpoint, from a cost standpoint, from a uses, usage and accessibility standpoint? So that, that element of the, of the resourcing is very important as an educational technologist. Um, I would say that within, a, um, within an educational technology leadership role, you have to be digital citizenship minded. Digital citizenship, um, from my standpoint, is this wonderful connector for all learning at a school. And I say this because we, we have a lot of issues in schools that schools are, are 20th century minded for 21st century living with 22nd century students. Digital citizenship allows us to bridge that because we need the content from the 20th century. We need the ability to interact with the 21st century in terms of how do we access the resources and the, and the, the communication tools at the speed that we're doing now. And then how do we develop a level of skills and competencies for students to go beyond what we're teaching them? Digital citizenship is that bridge across all of those elements. And there are a ton of resources around. But for digital citizenship to be uh, valuable, it has to be embedded across the board. And an educational technology leader has to hold the torch for that, for that battle, for that, for that work. And so I suggest that you become very clear on what does digital citizenship mean for you and your institution and how do you champion it at your school? Um, I would also suggest that, that design thinking and STEM and, focus, and, STEM and coding focus um, are very important for, for educational technology in terms of this realm of leadership. You, you again have to be the torch bearer for saying, you know what, regurgitation and behaviorist based learning is not what is going to be of value to our students who are going off to university, who are um, going to become the leaders of tomorrow, or are going to become innovators, um, or even moving on into the workforce. They need to be communicators. They need to be collaborators. They need to be able to access and use information. They need to be able to design and analyze and research. And so that comes from this understanding of 21st century pedagogies that really falls within the educational technology realm. If, if there's partnerships with other curriculum areas or there's some other expert on, on campus, that's great. That's of huge value. But as a leader for yourself, you really need to be a champion for that. You need to push the STEM, the STEM focus at your school. You need to understand that coding develops so many valuable um, thought processes and understandings of how our, our new world kind of interacts. Um, and that all, again, ties to teaching and learning. Within the learning element here, so again, I talked about effective digital resources and now learning, an educational technologist needs to be learning focused. So that's our job, right? And within all of the decisions I make within a leadership or management um, element of the school or the IT systems that I'm building, they all have to be around learning. That's our business. That's the mission of our school. And so you have to be mission focused. And so as you're holding the torch for digital citizenship or, or coding or STEM, you're doing it for the reason of developing learning amongst your stakeholders, amongst your community members. Um, the decisions that you make need to be tied to curriculum. You need to be part of the curriculum discussion. And I would suggest that you have to have an understanding of the curriculum and teaching practices, the approaches to learning, the approaches to teaching um, within your school. That, that's part of your element as an educational technology leader. <coughs> You need to understand the learning styles of your stakeholders. Um, you need to understand learning styles in general. Um, and this is part of our teacher training, so really having a, a good grip on pedagogic practices um, is important because 
technology um, enhances certain learning styles, it accounts for other elements of other learning styles, and some learning styles have to adapt to using technology um, to enhance overall learning. So with you being an educational technologist and understanding what the needs are of those various areas, it makes you more effective and makes the impact of your educational technology programs that much deeper. Um, one thing that I would suggest, and this kind of ties back to this 20th versus 20th first century model, um, we have a lot, of, a, a lot of experience now saying that creative learning or you know, student agency or student engagement, student ownership of learning is very powerful. It deepens learning, it makes it longer lasting, it provides a lot of value. However, there is a lot of, of information, data, knowledge that has to be taken in. And what technology does is it amplifies this discussion by offering the need to, to, um, to take a deep look at what does creative learning really mean? What does um, constructivism or social constructivism or creativism, what does that mean for learning and why is that value? And why do most of our assessments, most of the ways that we have been teaching up to this point, and our high stakes assessments like leaving exams and, and certificate exams focus a lot on consumption of knowledge? It's very important for you as, a, as an educational leader, um, not just an educational technologist, to have a feeling or an understanding of, of the pros and cons of creative versus consumptive learning because technology ends up falling right in the middle of that. And what is your technology doing for your institution to amplify, to draw upon, to find balance within these things? Um, it's a bit of a high level discussion, but you're gonna have people come in and say, we're being tested on, on this level of consumed knowledge. The technology has to reinforce that. Does it? Is it that important? Is that a central part of the ethos of your school? Somebody on the other side will come in and say, creativity, um, student creation and construction of knowledge is the absolute best way for students to learn. Is that true? Is it, is it really the best thing for them to learn without developing skills and knowledge? I don't know. And the technology is going to be used for both of them. So where do you sit on that fence? How do you have that discussion? And then the last thing that I would suggest in terms of learning is that you need to be able to model curiosity. Something new comes out, I want to try something out, I want to explore, I want to facilitate a discussion, I want to go out there and, and encourage a student to try something new, that comes from you. It will, be, it will be felt everywhere, but at no point should you be a barrier to curiosity, to innovation, to trying new things. And I would suggest, again, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a burden to you as an educational technology leader, but you kind of need to hold that torch. You need to say, within my budget, I've put some money aside so that we can try new things. I want a new technology here. I want to try a new service. I want to get a set of student leaders together to try this out. And let's experiment. It may fail completely, but we're going to learn from our failures. And failure is a good thing. Failure moves us forward in our learning. Um, if we didn't fail, we wouldn't learn anything. So that element of curiosity and that approach to developing an ethos of trying and, and experimenting kind of comes from you as an educational technologist. You notice I haven't talked a lot about knowing the technology. I've said that you need to understand the tools and the resources. That's true. But your job as an educational technologist is to focus more on the education than on the technology. The tools are there. You need to know where they are. They need to be organized and reliable, yes. But really, you are there to enhance learning through the technology. That's, that's what a techn an educational technologist does. And if you go out there and read up on some of the most impactful educational technologists out there, they are, at their core, pedagogues. They understand teaching and learning and curriculum at a level you find very rarely in other fields. And that's, that's your job is to encourage that. Okay. So one of the things I also say kind of in this space is that as an educational technology leader, you are a lead learner at the school. And I love that term, lead learner. I wish we'd kind of get rid of the word principal and say lead learner. Um, your job is to learn yourself, to encourage learning amongst others and facilitate it through programs and policies and support and all of that sort of stuff. 
one of the questions that I get though is in terms of ed tech, who am I supporting as an ed tech leader? Um, who, who am I helping learn? And really there's quite a bit. And I would argue that as an educational technology leader, you are supporting every stakeholder group on campus. Now, obviously you're helping the teachers. That's probably your first line of connection. You're helping them build their practice, build their capacity so that they can create more interactive and impactful um, consumptive or creative learning activities for their students. You are working directly with the students and indirectly with the students to help them learn, but that's not the limitation. The limitations are, there actually are no limitations. The bounds within your community are, are non-existent when it comes to who you impact um, from a learning perspective as an ed tech leader. You will be helping operational staff, administrative staff, and leadership um, develop their understanding of technology for learning, for operations. That comes through you. You are going to help them. You're going to build training materials and professional development materials or facilitate that through your school or through your, your teams and through your school. Some people may ask you um, to focus only on the students and the, and the teachers because they, they see that, that is our, those are our main customers, those are our main um, employees, but the entire school needs what you do. And so you have to have a focus beyond them to also hit the operational staff and to help the leadership understand their position within supporting um, and pushing educational technology at the school. I would argue that you are, um, you are involved in educating the board members. The strategies, the, the finances, the fiduciary elements of what you're creating in the long term um, need to be communicated to the board so they understand what your ethos, what your understanding, what your plans are for educational technology so that they can be supportive of it and they're knowledgeable enough to ask the right questions and help guide you towards their vision of what the school should be. If there's not a, if there's not a learning connect there, you're going to find a lot of issues. Um, the parents. So there are a lot of opportunities to help the parents learn. We do coffee mornings, we do connections to resources, we do ambassador programs. We help them understand why we're using technology for learning because a majority of them have not participated in that as learners themselves. They're used to books and pencils and paper and we say we're using those but we're also enhancing them, we're going beyond them, we're supplementing them, we're replacing them. Um, and so educating them on what learning really means in the 21st century that's, that's part of what you're doing. I would argue that you are also, also engaging the broader community. So people outside of the school that want to come in, connecting to other schools, other districts. You, are, you as an educational technology leader, are connecting them. You, you are creating learning opportunities for them as well. And you're learning from them. This is not a, a unidirectional um, learning opportunity. You're also learning from them as you are with the other stakeholder groups. And then one thing that I, I see from the most effective educational technology leaders in our field is that they are learners in the field. They present their information, their knowledge to others, they consume from others, they connect and become part of that network. That, that is your job. That is how you become a successful ed tech person because if you're stuck in your own community or your own school, you're not bringing in that knowledge from others you're not highlighting the great things that you're doing, and you're not creating those all-important learning dialogues with experts around the world. So again, students, teachers, administration, staff, um, leadership, board members, parents, the broader community, and the ed tech field. Those are, are the people you're connecting with as you, again, I'll repeat my statement as from before, as you are using educational technology, and educational technology is the effective use of digital resources for learning. So in summary, the educational technology tenant of educational technology leadership means that you are able to live and be the torchbearer and be the, the pedagogue on campus understanding the intersection of technology and learning for all members of the community. Now, if you don't feel that you have the skill in that, it's a little bit harder to develop than the IT skills that I mentioned in a previous video. There are materials out there. I would suggest you do become versed, follow the right people, um, watch some videos. Um, but I would go and talk to your curriculum experts, teachers, and understand what teaching is at a, at a fundamental level, what learning is at a fundamental level, and then potentially look at getting certification as a teacher if you don't have it. 
I know it's a big undertaking, but having an understanding of learning is invaluable. It's, it's really almost a requirement to being a fully successful educational technology leader. So focus on that. Um, tie your work into developing the, the learning habits of your entire community, and you will be that much more successful as an educational technology leader. Thank you very much.